Okay, I am here with Stephen McAndrews from Spider Monkey Games talking about Terminus Gate. How you doing, Stephen? Good, Mitch. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So, what, tell us about Terminus Gate. Terminus Gate's a squad-based, campaignable sci-fi miniatures game uh, that my business partner Dave Husser and I designed and have been working on for the last, uh, last five or six years, really. Um, it's designed for you to build a spacefaring crew and uh, advance them through mission after mission, upgrading their skills and stats and buying equipment for them. And uh, We've also designed a plethora of uh, alien opponents to face off against, as well as uh, other players' crews. So. Uh, if you have a group of friends that you would be playing with, you take your crew from a freshman, un inexperienced crew all the way up through, uh, hopefully, some sort of rough badasses eventually. So uh, we, we're, we're looking at a couple of uh, your squads here. Yeah, Tell us had, what we're uh, looking at here. We've had um, a couple of test models made, basically. We built a crew from the core world, which is the sort of center of uh, human existence. That would be Earth and the... the soul system uh, and other systems outside of that that are sort of the, the technological and cultural centers of, the, the, of humanity right These look now. amazing. These, so these were done from 3D uh, digital prints to a 3D printer to a metal model. And uh, we're very happy with the results. Um, they're scaled, they're probably a true 28 millimeter uh, scaled model, not a heroic uh, scaled model, but uh, we, we are very happy with how they turned out. And, and they are prototypes for now. We do have... Um, Five, uh, four other uh, crew background types that we have designs for uh, that we will eventually get modeled and, and are looking forward to to getting out on the table for you. Great. So what are we looking at here as far as the table? How does this? How do, well, give you some. Give me a quick uh, uh, idea of how the the game mechanic works. Well, the, the game's designed to be played either on a traditional wargaming tabletop with uh, three dimensional scenery. Uh, we also have a set of tiles that we've designed that can be they're modular and can be positioned and repositioned to make any type of configuration that you want. Um, the game can be played on either type of environment, any type of environment really. If you have scenery for it, feel free to put your guys out on it. Desert, uh, ruins, uh, sci-fi, uh, I mean we've done it with uh, sort of low tech, like oh well, we found a, a planet that's inhabited by humans that are living at a bare subsistence level, like, you know, almost like a medieval town, and it still feels right, so. Uh, but, but if somebody used, say, um, some of the MDF or plastic card uh, uh, terrain that is really kind of exploding with games like Infinity sure, and, and yeah. whatnot, uh, it, would, it would be the same scale and would be yeah. workable? Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Um, so, I mean, we did plenty of playtesting with stuff we already had, which is, goes from a number of companies. Um, uh, Multi-level is great, too. The game's a lot of fun when the danger of falling is thrown into the mix. And... Uh, uh, sort of more, I guess, destructed environments uh, can be a lot of fun. Uh, tight quarters that we do with these tiles is uh, keeps the game pretty fast-paced and keeps people from sort of buckling down or hiding in, in you know small environments uh, and keeps the game moving. So, what is this board here that we're looking at? This is a space station board that's made up from the the uh, tile components. There are probably 30 different tiles that I've used here and put together digitally to, so that I could print them out as a single piece. This isn't how you would buy it, obviously. It would be available. As each one of these rooms would be a separate tile. Sure. i got to tell you, I'd love to have one of these. I love I love gaming mats. I, it's like all the craze now. Well, so I as much as I would, building them. It's certainly a lot I, of fun. I would definitely them. get them as the tiles, but something like this. The best thing about tiles is that you could change it up, right? Sure. Yeah. Okay. This, this is still an awesome, an awesome uh, just... Pull it out, and you have a you have a battle ready. We, we also had two versions of our tiles made. We have a clean version that we use for sort of ship inhabited ship interiors, and then this is the what we call the distressed version. It looks like it's been through the ringer. There's blood. There's you know scorch marks, and everything's furniture's all tossed over. So yeah, this would be the equivalent of like an abandoned space station or something that has suffered some sort of uh, catastrophic event. And uh, your crew might have gotten a contract to claim the the uh, environment for salvage, um, but that's the idea. Is your, your crew runs contracts, and that's how they make their money. That's how they gain their experience. And for a successful contract, you gain income, lets you buy new equipment, add to your crew. Um, so these cards over here are used to establish environment. Um, potential environmental hazards and your contracts as well. So each player would draw from the contract deck there. Um, some skills allow you to redraw or draw two and pick the one you like. 
uh, skills your captain might have. Uh, there's salvage missions, uh, investigation, sabotage, espionage, assassin, assassination. Um, and you stack the deck the way you like to play. That was That's always been one of our, for us, our biggest selling points. If, if you don't like to play, uh, you know, espionage missions, take them out of the deck. You know, if your crew, if you're, the guys you play with don't have particular scenery, take those environments out of the deck. If you even bother to play with randomly generated scenery. Um, and the hazards are the same. I mean, the idea would be that every sort of alien model that we released would come with a hazard card that you would add to the deck as you purchase the model. So, uh, you know, we, we don't have uh, any of our alien models made yet, or very few of them at least. But if you purchased a Stonecutter model, it would come with Stonecutter as a hazard. You put it in the hazard deck. Well, there's one of them either loose on the ship, loose in the environment, whatever. Um, we also use our, all of our creatures as contract cards as well in, our, in what we call safari missions. Let's take a look here at the uh, this nice <laughs> spiral bound that we have. Maybe we got a couple of pictures. Oh, that's great. We stuck to a small format, which I, I like. Um, it's very portable. Um, it'll probably top out at around 100 pages when, when all said and done. Um, the spiral now that's in there is you know, just what I have the capability of doing myself. But um, we've had a number of people tell us they like the ability to fold it uh, open to the page they want it open to, not have to sit a weight on it to keep it open. So I got I, I have a picture here with ships. Yes. So this is it's something relatively recent that we added. Um, you know, players had said, you know. What what uh, what's my ship called? What type of ship? And we said, oh well, you just you can make up the name for the ship. But the more we thought about it, the more we liked the idea of you having your own Millennium Falcon, uh, Serenity, whatever it is. Uh, the, the things that attach players even more to their crews. So we would pick a ship type, and each type of ship has a benefit of some kind to your crew. Um, decommissioned military craft, medical frigate, cargo hauler. Passenger freighter. They all they all have a benefit of some kind. So right now there's missions that are based off of what you put you pull out of your deck. Yes. Um, what kind of a campaign structure do you have? Uh, the campaign basically, if you have an arbitrator that's going to run a campaign for you, um, they may pull any type of the creatures or uh, opponents. We have a, a number of. Um, I would I want to call them NPCs necessarily because they are playable, but we have a lot of. Uh, Creeps, we were calling them for a while. Uh, per personalities that are human or or alien, but are are intelligent species, and they each have their own crews that you might face off against them. So we have um, uh, Captain Finch, who's like a, a mad pirate, basically, and his crew. And uh, if you were to like an arbitrator, might play that crew on a table that already has two crews playing on it, um, or play it against a new player in order to give them the chance to advance enough to. Uh, catch up to the other players that are already playing in a campaign, but uh, the campaignable idea is, is based on the use of the contract cards uh, and our our belief that, that a narrative builds itself as you play uh, a campaign sort of organically. There were plenty of resources in the rulebook for a, an arbitrator to build um, opponents, environments, uh, based on our setting, uh, um, and the contracts I think just add to that really. Awesome. So where are we? Where, where's your net? What's your next uh, step with the uh, with the uh, game development? Uh, um, if, if people are going to look at, or want to look more about uh, about Terminus Gate specifically. Well, Terminus Gate, you can always look us up on uh, Facebook at Spider Monkey Games. Uh, we also have a website that we use as a blog to uh, let our followers know. Uh, what is in, in immediate development. A lot of concept art goes up there. Any new sweeping changes we might make to the rule book, and that's where we post updates to our rules as well. You can download a PDF of the of the sort of playtest rules that we ran uh, from there as well if you're interested in checking out the, the rule system. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you very much, Stephen. And uh, this is MC1 Gamer. We're going to be doing a little bit more about uh, Terminus Gate uh, and following you, and uh, we're wishing you a lot of luck. Thank Can't wait much. to see this. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you.